The intent of this video is to discuss the survivability of the 8th Army Air Force's World War II bomber crew members who ditched or bailed out over the English Channel or North Sea. This chart outlines the causes for World War II aircraft to ditch. Combat damage, engine failure, and fuel exhaustion accounted for 81% of the causes for an aircraft ditching. Bomber crew members had a roughly 1 in 600 chance of ditching or bailing out over the English Channel or North Sea per each effective sortie. This chart shows the state of the Axis Control Territories in January 1945. The English Channel is shown here. The North Sea is shown here. Ditching was preferable to bailing out while flying in a bomber. The bombers housed life rafts and emergency gear, which can dramatically increase the crew's survival rate. Bailing out will likely cause crew members to land scattered and not be able to reconnect or render assistance to each other. A ditching versus bailing out over water survivability study was conducted during the month of August 1943. The study concluded that 58% of ditching crew members were rescued, where only 16% of the crew members who bailed out were rescued. Roughly 430 heavy bombers ditched in the English Channel or North Sea during World War II. If the pilot deems the bomber is going to ditch, if feasible, he will gain altitude to send a distress signal. The range of the VHF radio is dependent on the altitude of transmission. This June 1945 declassified document outlines the transmission ranges expected for VHF communications equipment. A 30-mile transmission range is expected for a plane at a 1,000-foot altitude. A 180-mile transmission range is expected for a plane at a 20,000-foot altitude. When the plane's intending on ditching, the plane's IFF emergency switch will be turned on. The radio operator will send an SOS signal. The SOS signal will be followed by a 20-second dash so the plane's position can be obtained from ground direction finding stations. The radio operator will relay the plane's position, speed, course, altitude, nature of trouble, and approximate time to ditch. This 1945 declassified chart outlines the typical process of an air sea rescue. Once a distress message is received, the signal is picked up by multiple coastal fixer stations. The fixer stations look like this. The fixer crew members rotates the fixer antenna to the strongest signal direction. The signals are triangulated to determine the plane's position. The plane's estimated ditching position is provided to the air sea rescue team. The air sea rescue team includes spotter planes and air sea rescue boats. This chart shows the coastal fixer stations in England as of June 1944. This image shows a dispatched air sea rescue boat. This chart shows the RAF Hudson dropping a rescue boat to a ditched B-17 back in 1943. This image shows a P-47 outfitted as an air sea rescue spotter plane. The special P-47s are equipped with droppable dinghy packs and position marking smoke bombs. If ditching is anticipated, the pilot will announce to the bomber crew members the intent to ditch, altitude, and approximate number of minutes before water impact. Each crew member will acknowledge understanding of the command by voice. The pilot will ring the bailout bell with six short bursts. Six bursts to signify intent to ditch or crash land. Three bursts for a bailout. Each crew member will have specific duties to perform. All crew members will remove their flak vests, flak aprons, and parachutes. Oxygen masks will be removed if at altitudes less than 10,000 feet. The bombardier will jettison the bombs and close the bomb bay doors. All gunners will either jettison or shoot out their ammo. The waste gunners will throw their guns overboard. Close all windows, hatches, and doors. All crew members except the pilot and co-pilot will take their ditching positions in the radio room. The pilot will signal the crew to brace for impact by a long, continuous bailout bell ring. The bell will be rung five seconds prior to impact. This chart shows the position of each crew member in their respective ditching positions. Plane evacuation should take no more than 40 seconds. Life vests are not to be inflated until you have exited the plane. Once the plane has settled, the life rafts will be deployed by pulling on the handles in the radio room. 
The deployed life raft is shown in this image. The life rafts should be tied together. The provisions within the life rafts are shown in this image. Each crew member will have specific duties to perform. The right waist gunner is responsible for removing the Gibson Girl radio from the plane. The Gibson Girl radio is a transmit only radio to provide a distress signal for a station fix. The radio sends a signal on a pre tuned international distress frequency of 500 kilocycles. The radio comes with both a kite and hydrogen balloon to deploy a 300 foot long antenna. The transmitter range was 300 miles with a fully deployed antenna. If there's not enough wind to field a kite, the crew member will launch the antenna with a hydrogen filled balloon. Crew members who have survived a water rescue can now apply for membership to the Goldfish Club. So what was the likelihood of a bomber crew member being rescued whose plane ditched in the North Sea or English Channel? This declassified 8th Army Air Force chart outlines ditching stats for bomber crew members flying both the B-17 bomber and the B-24 bomber operating out of Great Britain. The first column is a month and year spanning January 1943 through May 1945. The second column is the number of crew members who ditched or bailed out over water. The third column is the number of rescued crew members. The last column represents the percentage of crew members rescued. The overall survivability rate of a B-17 crew member ditching or bailing out is 37.9%. The overall survivability rate of a B-24 crew member ditching or bailing out is lower at 26.5%. The B-17 is considered to have good ditching characteristics. The B-17's low-slung, large planform wing designs provides better flotation during a water landing. A review of 112 B-17 ditching events showed that 53% of the bombers were still floating after 5 minutes. The B-24s were designed with a high-slung wing and cabins that tended to collapse at the number 6 fuselage bulkhead frame during water impact. A review of 41 B-24 ditching events showed that 35% of crew members were killed on impact or failed to egress the bomber prior to its sinking. This B-24 is ditching in relatively calm waters with a deceleration rate of 2.6 Gs. This chart comes from a declassified 1953 Air Force study on ditching in World War II. The x-axis is a month and year. The y-axis is the number of crew members. The solid line is the number of 8th Army Air Force crew members who ditched or bailed out over the English Channel or North Sea per month. The dashed line is the number of crew members who were rescued per month. The chart curves shown do not exactly match the previously shown B-17 and B-24 tabular ditching data. This chart includes all 8th Army Air Force's aircraft, including medium bombers and fighters. The area between the two curves represent the number of crew members who were not rescued per month. The tabular ditching and bailout data for the 8th Army Air Force's P-47s, P-38s, and P-51s is shown in this chart for reference. This chart plots the percentage of crew members who ditched or parachuted over water who were rescued. The x-axis is a month and year. The y-axis is a percentage of crew members who were rescued per month. The average value for all 8th Army Air Force's aircraft equated to 38%. The crew survival rate is strongly dependent on the season of rescue. The average rescue rate for the month of September equated to 62%. The average rescue rate for the month of January equated to a low value of 15%. The difference in seasonal rescue rates is due to water temperature, choppy sea conditions, and diminished visibility conditions of the summer season versus the winter season. Water temperatures of the English Channel during 1944 ranged from 40 degrees Fahrenheit in winter to 62 degrees Fahrenheit in summer. Here's a question to ponder. As a B-24 commander, would you rather ditch your bomber in the North Sea during December or have the crew parachute bail out over hostile territory and likely become a POW? If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.